the North Devon coast in southwest England. Here, an experiment is taking place. People have set up a biosphere reserve to look into the future. The biosphere reserve covers a huge coastal area in danger of serious damage from sea level rise as our climate gets warmer. But do local people know what the biosphere reserve is? The biosphere? Not really, no. It's a big greenhouse, isn't it? No, no idea at all, honestly. Of oh, the what? <laughs> the biosphere oh. reserve? Vaguely. Very vaguely. Probably not enough to talk about. It probably means we pay more. Oh, perhaps it does. <laughs> but I didn't know it was whatever you said it was. <laughs> biosphere reserve. <laughs> How wonderful. A key motive behind biospheres is to alert people to their surroundings. It doesn't surprise me that uh, there's not many people have heard of the Biosphere Reserve. The message has been put out lots of times. People have probably heard the message. I had heard of it, but I couldn't remember the name of it. <laughs> what is important is about the values and the qualities behind it, not so much the name of the concept itself. Biospheres are not domes in the middle of the countryside like the famous Eden Project in southwest Britain. They are living laboratories where people with an eye on the future respond to changes in their environment. Biospheres were created by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. There are 531 biosphere reserves around the world. To share experience, the British biosphere has twinned itself with the Malindi and Watamu Reserve in Kenya. The regions have much in common. Both have a beautiful coastline attractive to tourists. Both have habitats endangered by unsuitable development. Both have conflicts between man and nature. The Man in the Biosphere programme was brought about because clearly there are those conflicts between humankind and nature. You could say the Biosphere Reserves, their, their foundation is in conflict areas. The south side of the estuary is protected by a huge ridge of grey pebbles. In the last couple of years at high tides, the waves have made a gap in the ridge and have started to smash down the low cliffs behind the beach. The sea is flooding the land and many local people are not happy. In the past, the council would repair the ridge by moving pebbles into the gaps with heavy machinery. But in the last few years, the policy for the pebble ridge has changed allowing the sea to flood the land behind, known locally as the burrows. Local councillors like Andrew Eastman think that is wrong. My issue is protect the ridge now, rebuild it to prevent the water from inundating that and thus buy us some more time to this very, very uh, un unfortunate scenario. If we were foolish enough to adopt this crazy policy of do nothing. In years to come, in generations to come, I do not want to be held responsible for being one of those who have just done nothing to prevent this very, very valuable asset of ours being depleted to the sea and allowing the mother nature to regain what we've always taken for granted as our burrows to enjoy. Andy Bell is well aware of the lobby for beach repairs, but looks at the problem differently. The modelling we've done for the next 100 years means we're going to have to start thinking about moving. We can't play you know, King Canoe to try and stop things all the time. We can't keep on putting millions and millions of pounds into holding a situation that isn't really sustainable. There has to be a time when we move back. 